This really seemed like quite the kitchen sink in terms of earnings report. What do you think was, I guess, the most damning here? Well, I think it's just a growth issue. They've focused so much in the past few years on, on cutting costs, and that was the real strategy behind the merger of Kraft Heinz five years ago, that they sacrificed innovation, they sacrificed uh, growth, investing behind their brands, and uh, you're seeing the results. Uh, you know, the, the stock has taken a bath. And those old brands, you, you can reinvest in them, and you can create value through those old brands. Companies like B&G show that you can do that. Um, it's just, to me, a little bit of uh, poor management and, and ill-thought strategy. Scott, what's your take on, on that management point in particular, given the write-downs and, and whether this uh, should have been done more sort of periodically before? Yeah, I mean, I think the challenge is, is I actually a little disagree with what was said. I think the Kraft Heinz management team, they kind of get the label of the 3G uh, cut costs at, you know, and, and, and suck out the life of a company. But as we look at Kraft Heinz, they've done a lot of innovating and renovating, uh, particularly in the meat category with Oscar Mayer. So I think the challenge for Kraft Heinz goes well beyond just the one company situation. It goes to what's going on with food producers here in the U.S. And we think the environment is just awful. Um, we have very little population growth. We got birth rates falling and families drive consumption. We got the pure foods trend, which is alive and well. Um, meatless Mondays, I think, are, are going to become more and more popular. Um, so just a lot, a lot of challenges, uh, not to mention private label. Um, so the company faces enormous challenges. Um, they have reinvested in their brands, but it's just not working. And it's maybe even worse because it's not working than if they just were cutting costs and not reinvesting. So, Scott, to that point, if this, is a, if this is a broader issue, a broader trend for everybody across the board, does consolidation, does more M&A from these big players, something I know Kraft Heinz talked about or touched on on its call, make, make sense here? I mean, it really does. I mean, could we please get some M&A in the space? I mean, a lot of the companies are actually pretty small when, they, when you compare them next to Walmart, which is, you know, four or five, six times bigger than, than a lot of the companies. We just had Cagney, which is the big conference down in, in Florida. And man, do we need consolidation, but the family structures actually prevent some of it. Um, but you know, let's hope we get some because we need it in the space. So Jeff, you, you, you disagree slightly and think, think that they have been doing too much cost cutting. Either way, what's the strategy from here in your eyes that can get them back on the right track? Yeah, I, I, I guess I would agree a little bit with Scott in that there is this uh, family ownership structure with a lot of these big food companies. But the reality is if you put these big companies together, if they have the right strategy for growth, they'll be able to connect with the consumer and take advantage of these trends that, that Scott talked about. Uh, the reality is it's, it's, it's an inability to uh, address the consumer in a way that, uh, that, that the consumer wants, you know? It's, it's, it's sort of a, a little bit of not being able to get out of your own way and your old way of doing business and just throw marketing dollars at it as opposed to focusing on innovation. So to me, the, the way towards success and growth in the food sector is, is to invest in innovation, to, to put your finger on the pulse of the consumer and you know, figure out how to address those, those, those trends. There's still overall growth in the food sector. It's just it's the little entrepreneurial companies that are, that are the ones that are growing right now. It's not the big food companies because they just aren't close enough to the consumer to figure these things out. And you see efforts by all of these companies to try to, to do that, but I think they're you know, the problem is it's the, they, they can't effectively get out of their historical way of doing business in order to kind of tap into all those trends and all that growth. Uh, so I'm going to ask this question to both of you. Jeff, I'll start with you. Your rating on the stock and in light of the numbers we got after the bell last night, does that change? Um, I think Kraft has to do something. Uh, they have to do something to, as I said, reconnect with the consumer. Um, you know, clearly they're positioning themselves for another major transaction, but to, to just merge with another big company to try and create more cost-saving opportunities just doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, if they can do that and they can innovate and, and take the, the power and the muscle of, of putting big companies together and creating a true innovation strategy, a true consumer-facing strategy, 
then I think that's going to be the, the way towards success. So, you know, if you ask me for a rating on the stock, if they do more of the same, I'd say my rating would be a sell. <laughs> uh, I'm not a stock gotcha. analyst. I'm an M&A banker, but that's kind of how I would put it. Yeah, thanks for thanks for clarifying that. Scott, I will put that same question to you, though, because uh, I know you have an outperform rating here. Are you going to stick with that? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, obviously everything's always under review, but, you know, we've had the, probably the biggest bearish call on the industry. Uh, clearly egg on our face trying to pick a relative winner here as, as Kraft has, you know, obviously had an incredibly hard time today. But it falls on Conagra having a bit, you know, hard time when they reported a couple weeks ago, Kellogg even McCormick, which is a spice company. So I think that you know, Jeff hit on something important. These companies have to try to reinvent themselves. Um, another trend we talked about is the craft beer trend, which is basically you go to the peanut butter category. It used to be Skippy and uh, Jif and Skippy, and now there's a, you know, just so many different brands. So the question is, can large packaged food companies tap into some of these trends, um, or are they just gonna have to merge and merge and cut costs? Uh, I think it's gonna have to be a combination of both. Um, and Kraft, believe it or not, has a little bit better mousetrap. Um, they can do things more efficiently, but their categories uh, are just terrible. So they got to get into some better categories.